Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do a after action report of Pulp Alley set in the Napoleonic period. So let's get started. So I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I was interested in doing some videos showing how Pulp Alley rules could be used for more traditional historic games. And for my first video along those lines, I have completely failed. Um, I have decided to do a Napoleonic game set in Peninsula War. And pretty quickly I realized, particularly since my figures are actually even based on the characters and actors from Sharp's Rifles, that Sharp Rifles is basically a pulp story set in the Napoleonic world. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the game that I put together with that. I did make a couple of changes or use some of the optional rules that are available. Uh, I'm using skirmish for the guns so they have to be reloaded. I'm only using three uh, plot points. That's per the skirmish rules presented as an option in these rules. But um, otherwise I'm using most of the same components that are available in Pulp Alley and running it as a pulp game set in the Napoleonic period. That's something else to consider, and uh, Dave does really well on his page of showing this, uh, on how a number of his pre-written scenarios can easily be used in periods or genres outside of what may become immediately uh, come to mind or what they were actually written for. So uh, that's always something to keep in mind, even with the printed material. But uh, enough of that. Let's go to the gaming table. So here we have a table set up for a historic Pulp Alley game. I mentioned I was going to alter rules to play more proper historic games. And then I realized when writing up Sharp's Rifles uh, that that's probably not the best example. So this game is going to be something in between what I was describing and a normal pulp game. It dawned on me that actually Sharp's Rifles as it exists is a pretty good choice for a pulp game just set in a different period. So that's kind of what we're going to do, with the exception that we are using the optional skirmish rule. Uh, what skirmish does is it reduces your plot points. Instead of using five plot points, we're only going to be using three. The first one is this gentleman just here. He's a local who is anti-Bonaparte. The second is a little Spanish girl way over here who is friendly with the French commander or René Giraud. Uh, so he's looking to get information from them. And in both cases, they're looking for the primary plot point who is going to be uh, this gentleman here. He is a French agent who is hiding in town. Normally, your major plot point would be in the center of the table, but I'm going to actually place him randomly 1d10 away from whoever the first of those other plot points is taken. Uh, he's also going to move at the end of the turn if he isn't taken I'm using that same die roll, and he's going to move any time they fail to take him. The weapons, I'm going to treat the rifles the riflemen have as rifles per the special weapons rules. Uh, we're going to treat the carbines as the normal shoot, and pistols are going to be given a maximum range of 12 inches. In all cases, all of these firearms are using the single shot roll which means once fired, it will take an action to reload them. We've already rolled for our random events. We got recon for the French. The French are actually reconnoitering originally, being careful, so they cannot move more than six inches. They can't run on their first turn, and they can't enter into any combat actions on their first turn. Whereas the rifles got a friendly local, and they took a shooter one. Here are my riflemen, the friendly local shooter. Uh, this is my sidekick uh, over here. You can see Sharp, and he's here with Hagman, and I think that's Sims. This is where they're starting, within 12 inches on this side of the table, whereas the French are starting. We have the officer right there. You can see the lady they're trying to meet here, and then there's a couple of other guys. Now, a couple of things I would suggest. Like I said, I'm doing a somewhat still pulpy game. You could decide to get rid of the plot points entirely if you wanted to. I like them because I feel like they're furthering the story and helping them find the guy they're looking for. You could easily do the same sort of adventure by taking a pre-written scenario. We're just doing 
sort of an easy encounter thing, but you could take almost any of the scenarios that have been pre-written up in the game and alter them into this sort of game very easily. It'd be a little harder maybe with a standard historic game, but making it a pulpish game just in another historic venue, like debate dating it to uh, historic fiction like uh, Sharp, Sharp's Rifles, that's actually relatively easy. This could have been Crossroads, for instance. That's a very easy change and an easy fix right off. Uh, you could also have gotten rid of using fortune cards. We're using fortune cards. I'm playing a solo game, so I'm not playing by solo rules, but I am playing a solo game, so I might as well talk about those. I'm using uh, the English have breakaway, which uh, allows us to roll a dodge or a brawl. Instead of rolling a dodge, they can do a brawl or a peril. There's your finished that causes when an enemy goes down, it causes him to discard a random card or remove the enemy from play. Uh, double tap, after you roll shoot dice, you reroll one die if the reroll is a success, four or plus, you may discard to return this card to your hand. The French, the French have out of nowhere, an attack against this target is resolved as an ambush. When you move into line of sight of an enemy that was out of line of sight at the start of your activation, you get to, to resolve that as an ambush. Faint, play after you roll brawl dice, reroll one die if the reroll is a success for. This is the same as the other card except for brawling. Uh, an arm injury. When the enemy fails a health check, this enemy suffers negative one dice penalty to shoot and brawl rolls for the remainder of the scenario. That's what we're looking at. We begin by pulling a card. I get not so fast for the English. The English, by the way, have the director's cone. When a character completes a plot point for the remainder of the scenario, the character holding this plot point is impaired. And the French get, gotta be kidding, play when a challenge is revealed. The number of successes required to pass this challenge is increased by the X number, the random number created by the card. We're gonna pull the first bullet out of my little counter, and we're gonna start the game. The English have a cone. I'm gonna begin. Sharp's gonna go ahead. He's right here. There's no reason he can't run. So he's gonna do that. He's gonna run up to there. Um, just get to there. So I'm not close enough to be able to do anything. I might as well Run his guys up with him. They're providing some cover. I don't know what these civilians are thinking about this, but might as well move my other fellas. I'm gonna go ahead and move these guys that are hiding hiding over here. They're just gonna walk. I've done all my activations. I'm gonna go ahead and give it over to the French. Well, I'll move the leader, Rene Giraud, first. They cannot run, they're limited in that. Rene's gonna, he doesn't have to. Kind of did that wrong. Should not have been able to do that. She's too close, or he was too close. But I did, so Rene's gonna go ahead and try for a plot point. So the first thing he's gotta do is peril, because uh, you always do. Again, like I said, we could have dropped this, but we didn't. Challenge, might, finesse, or cunning. He's gonna use cunning. It's 3d10. Oh, uh, actually it was only two successes, uh, which is good because he only got two successes, but that is good. He makes that. He manages to convince her by trickery to let her approach. Now he tries to actually get the plot. He's only got a, this is might. Apparently he's getting a little more forceful. She's a little resistance. He has to use might, but he has a 3d10 for that. And he gets an eight, nine, and an eight. He gets all three of them. So he takes the first plot point. In Skirmish, you only get three plot points, but every time you clearly win a fight, you will receive a reward card. Whenever you, or well, not every fight, but a, a sidekick or a leader, when you win a fight with them, there is a maximum still of five reward cards you can win. So what I got, reward while holding this plot point. Bonus, once per turn you may discard any fortune card to get this character a plus 1D bonus to brawl or might. Wow, I think he's gonna need that. And that's the first plot point. Oh, and I also said I was gonna use that to determine the location of the fella. So we're gonna roll a D10 and use that for direction and distance. I got five inches this direction. He's right there. How did we not see him? That's Rene Dunn. I'll go ahead and move his other fellows. This is Norman Assault. Uh, what's he gonna do? He's gonna head up over this way. 
and Adrian Tomas will go with them. Then over here we have the Sergeant Jeffrey Lamal. He's going to go to this tree, followed by Jean Marc Jabot. And that is uh, turn two finished. Nobody is injured. Uh, plot point has already been taken. And we pull another bullet out of the counter. We draw cards again. The English get clear shot before you roll to shoot an enemy in cover. Uh, the enemy loses their cover ability. And the French get uncanny before you roll to pass a challenge. You may use any skill for the roll. Uh, Richard Sharp's going to go ahead and approach his contact and play it. He gets challenged, one cunning. His cunning is 3d10. This is for the peril. Uh, he gets two successes. He only needed the one. So for the actual plot point, he gets challenge any skill, three. Okay, that's a little rough. Three, he can do it. Okay, I'm gonna use his quick-witted. That allows him to shift one action skill down. He's allowed to use any skill. So if I use Cunning, which would normally be 3d10, I will drop it to eight, but I will have five of them by using that skill. I can only use that once per turn. Uh, it, I didn't make it. I only got two. Richard Sharp uh, might take three. He's got to roll three health rolls. He's got d10s for on health. Uh, he fails two of them. You only ever take one health. Uh, but he is now wounded. Apparently that guy wasn't as friendly as we thought. I'm going to go ahead and do the random movement for them too. He's going to wander over to here. He's not sure. He's not sure he trusts these English after all. Uh, all right. Well, oh, that was not what I wanted. But he moved right over by Hagman. So I'm going to go ahead and activate Hagman and Hagman's going to try to get him as well. So he's got a peril roll. He's got uh, challenge, two success, cunning. Uh, Hagman's cunning is only a d6. He cannot make this. Uh, Hagman is going to have to roll his health. He does not make it. Uh, Hagman receives a uh, wound and because he is only uh, an ally, he is actually knocked down. This guy's actually kind of rough. Rifleman Sims is shooting at the French sergeant, Geoffrey Lamot. It is 25 inches. That's long range. That would normally be a negative one, but uh, the rifle rule doesn't give him extended range. I was wrong about that. What it does is it removes the negative one penalty for long range. On top of it, Sims, does he have any pluses? He can re-roll one shoot die or finesse die. His shoot is only d6, so it's not a great chance. Normally, I would shoot back in a normal version of this game, uh, but because the guns are single shot, I don't think that's a wise action. So I'm gonna have Lamoa a dodge with 2d8. So no successes for the shot, and two successes, <laughs> I didn't need those. Uh, he can also now move because he successfully dodged. I'm gonna move him just a little bit closer. Uh, these fellows here, I'm gonna go ahead and approach with, and they're gonna go ahead and provide cover. Actually, let's move them, let's move them all the way up to here. Patrick Harper, the sergeant, is gonna to try to play the plot point for um, that incredibly annoying supposed ally. Uh, they get Two finesse or cunning. Harper is two to six of either of those. And he's more of a fighter than a cunning and six finesse guy. Uh, so he needs both of those to be successes. For those of you not familiar with the game, a success is anything over a four. I'm figuring people watching my gameplay videos already know that, but just in case. Uh, no successes. That's not good. So he has to roll for two health checks. His health is a D8. He fails one of those. My, my group is getting beat up by this guy. So he's now at D6s until he heals that roll. It's going to be there goes. We're going to start with Rene. He got the information he needed. He's going to run out here. 
and approach that plot point. He can't take it because he ran to get there. He doesn't have another action. They, on the other hand, can start shooting, and they're going to. So that trooper Norman Assault, uh, his uh, shoot is 2d6. Um, he's going to shoot at Sims. Sims is in cover. Sims can't fire back, so he's going to have to dodge. Dassault's a d6. Uh, it's increased by another die. It's 2d6, but the increase is already in there. Sims's dodge is also a d6. So the gray one will be Sims. Uh, nothing successful for anybody. That's a period musketry for you. The other one is going to come over to this end. I think he's going to wait to fire because that's how fire teams should be working. And they're going to run over to here. This time we do have health rolls to make it. It's entirely on my side. So, Richard Sharp. D6 for Richard Sharp. His is better. Patrick Harper. His is better. And Hagman. Hagman's gone. So we have suffered an injury with the loss of Hagman. And now we go to turn three. The game is half over, nothing much has happened. We still have the cone, because none of that's been successful on their part. So we're gonna try to take some initiative here. Sharp's gonna close with that guy again, and try yet again to get his point. So he's got a challenge for the peril of approaching him. Two cunning or might. He's gonna do cunning again. This time he got all three, so he gets that. Then the plot point challenge, two finesse or cunning. He's going to do the same thing, try to be cunning. This time he got it. So he gets that. Sims is going to use an action to reload. He could also move, but where's he going to go? Harris is going to join him. Harris is going to shoot. Uh, oh, he's going to shoot the officer who's standing there in the open. Harris is also shoot his 2d6, but he is shooting at a leader. Uh, the leader is out of range with his pistol, so he cannot shoot back, but he can dodge, and that's what he's going to do, and he dodges on 3d10. So that's one hit for Harris. However, there's two successes for the dodge, and either of those would have stopped it. He's not going to use his optional move. He could move uh, two inches. But in this case, that's not any kind of advantage to him. The level one shooter, I'm gonna move through the gate and get closer to here. And then I'm gonna move. Sergeant up there. All right, that's their moves done. Now, like I said earlier, I don't have to actually move everybody on my side like I keep doing. It's just kind of easy, but you can alternate back and forth when you have the cone. I did not move. The leader, he's going to try to play that that plot point. And he gets three challenges with might, finesse, or cunning. He's going to play when a challenge is revealed. Uh, this will lower it or change that to whatever is on this card, and he gets one. So that was well played. That's going to lower it to one might, finesse, or cunning. And Rene, can, his, he's going to use his cunning again, because why not? He gets all three of those are successful. He only needed one. So he gets that uh, reward. Uh, until the end of the scenario, when while in their control, this character receives plus one D bonus to, to might rolls. That's actually really good for him because he's got a lot of might. Uh, however, I'm going to play not so fast. When the character completes a plot point, for the remaining of the scenario, the character holding that plot point is impaired. So he must roll a dice health check whenever he runs. And he has the agent right now. They have two plot points and they have the agent. We have to drop him. First thing I'm going to do is load the sergeant and then I'm going to fire with Adrian. He's going to shoot at Harper. His shoot is 2d6. I'm going to shoot back with Harper. Harper has his crazy gun. Harper could either shoot at 3d8. Yeah, he's going to shoot at 3d8. Uh, six, 
and a four, and a five. I think what I'm going to do is let all those go through. So Harper has to roll a d8 or be wounded. He is not. And Tomas has to roll two d6s or be wounded. And he is wounded. Yeah, he is only a follower, so he's actually down. Here behind the wall, and the wall is a difficult area, so they can cross over that. As long as they're not running, they can cross over that without any real injury. So they're just gonna cross over it. He's gonna take a position there, and he's there. This is Jean-Marc Joubert shooting at Hagman. Hagman is in cover. I, keep, I forgot the cover roll for, for uh, Harper, but it didn't really matter. Uh, his shoot is 2d6. Hagman could shoot back. I think I'm going to do that. Hagman's shoot is 3d6. So the white dice are Hagman. Jean-Marc are the dark dice. All right, so what do we get? We have two hits and one hit. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and take that. The two hits will be for Jean-Marc, and the one hit will be for Hagman. I think they both count as being in cover, which is good because they failed all of those. Jean-Marc is going to have to take a hit because he failed one, but the second die roll saved Hagman. So Jean-Marc has also uh, taken a hit, and that means he is down. Uh, that is it for this turn. So we have recovery rolls to make. I'm going to roll for Jean-Marc, who just fell first. Uh, Jean-Marc got a six, so he's actually okay. Adrian over here is gone. He is gone. Harper. Harper's fine. So we pull cards again. We are in turn four. Uh, the Brits got stay down when an enemy fails a health check. He cannot recall a recovery check. That's going to be good. And the French get break away. Instead of rolling the dodge or brawl or apparel, they immediately move one to three inches away. Hits are canceled. And uh, well, if things are going pretty well, we're going to keep going the way we're going. I'm going to reload with Harper. I'm going to reload with Hagman. Go ahead and fire with Harris to... The officer again. Okay, he can reroll one shoot die because he didn't move. That's what he gets. Uh, this is Harris. Harris is 2d6. He's eagle-eyed, which would have just changed the range, but that's not going to matter. Oh, okay. I, mean, I can double tap, which doesn't even make any sense with a single fire gun, but all right, so he's got 2d6. He can reroll one die. He's firing against Renee, whose dodge is 3d10. It's only one success on the dodge, one hit. He could choose to break that. He's going to, and he's going to move to the... Oh, I can re-roll, though. That's two hits, so he can't do both. Renee has to roll a health roll or take a damage. He's a d10. He makes it, so that's fine. Um, but his dodge is going to bring him to the wall, get him in cover there. I'm going to go ahead and shoot at a short range with the blunderbuss guy there. That's he's only a shoot one, 2d6, but he gets an extra die because of the range. Again, it's going to be a dodge 310, and he's in cover. Six and a five, that's two hits. One stops. He can stop one of those. He's going to do that. So he has to roll two health rolls. Uh, he made it. Sharp's going to run through here. Over to here. Do something heroic in a moment. It's going to be their turn. So the sergeant's firing a shot here. It is not long range. He's firing at uh, Hagman, who is in cover. Hagman could shoot back, because he did just load. Maybe I'll do that. I'm not sure that's a good idea, but... Jeffrey Lameau, has, his shoot is 3d8. 
He can discard a card for an extra one, so why wouldn't he do that? That's going to make him 48. Hagman has 3d6. All right, Hagman got one hit against two hits by the this, this sergeant. Um, he could start stop that one. So he's going to stop the one. Hagman has to roll a d6. He makes it. The sergeant has to roll a d8. He makes a five. That's a success. So they're both still okay. He's tired of getting shot at. I'm going to shoot at Harper with assault. I don't know if I want to fire back. Yeah, I think I do. The assault is shoot 2d6. And Harper, he shoot 3d8. Harper gets two hits and the assault gets none. Uh, the assault saves, he's on a d6. He fails both of them. He takes a hit. He is only a follower. So he's down. So we have recovery rolls to make. We have recovery for... That's the five. Tomas is fine. I think Tomas is dead, yeah. Uh, the salt we have, well, I, we'll just use that one for just, well, that rolled anyway. He's still low. okay. Uh, that was recovery. We go into turn five. This is the second to last turn of the game. Not a lot's happened here. Um, gonna reload all my guns. What do I do? Harper wants to move, but he really can't. My shooter can, though. Shooter loads and then reloads over, runs over to here. And I'm gonna rush with Sharp. Sharp rushes right into Jeffrey Lameau. This is a brawl. Sharp brawls on a 3D10. Uh, Jeffrey Lameau brawls on a 3D8. I can roll down my dice to 3D8s. That'll give me five to his three. So we'll roll the French sergeants first. He has, I was hoping to get at least one failure, but those are all successes. Six, five, and a four. So I'll roll these four, and if one of these is a fail, I'll re-roll. Uh, okay. Five, four, and a five. I'm gonna go ahead and risk all of these, I think. I'll let them all go through because Richard Sharp should have a better chance of surviving this with 3D10. Yeah, he saw, he stopped all of his attacks. But Jeffrey Lameau, he's D8s. He stops, stops all of his. That's not what we wanted to see. They're both going to fight again. This time it'll be 2d10 to 2d8. This is fighting back from uh, the sergeant. Uh, they both lose a die because they've been in a combat. Uh, I get one hit for sharp and one hit for Jeffrey. They both save on those same dice. They both save again. This is a rough fight. The problem is that there's other guys. There's a whole bunch of guys over there. Can... Yeah, I'm going to make this fight nasty for poor Sharp. I'm going to make him pay. So... So their, their commander Mark, rushes in. He is fighting at a 3d10. This is going to be bad. I might lose Sharp here. So that's 3d10 for the attack. And I'm going to dodge. So that is three hits. Not good. So one hit's going to get through. That he succeeds that. And the last guy over here gets into the fight. And Sharp is probably in over his head here. I need help. That is uh, Jean-Marc Jabot. His brawl is 2d6. Again, I'm going to... I keep dodging because 
at present, dodging is giving me uh, the chance to use three dice, and I'd be like at no dice now. It stopped all of those. And I can move two inches, so let's do that. And this fellow's loading. This is the last turn of the game. Oh, the boss guy was allowed to do another immediate attack. He, I forgot about that. Uh, that's one hit against was one hit with a nine. So I cannot stop that. So the health roll, I make that. So next turn, we're going to have to give some serious thought to what we're doing here. This is nasty over here. And I think I got myself into a pickle. So I'm going to start with the shooter, the friendly local shooter. He's going to shoot at the fellow in the woods there. You could shoot back. Um, that's one hit. This is salt. Salt shoots on a 2d6 as well. Uh, they each got one hit. Recovery roll. He fails, but he gets to roll again because of the cover. He still fails. He's wounded. Oh, he doesn't get to roll again because he's a freebie extra dude, so he's just gone. And this guy here in the wild also fails. He keeps getting knocked down, but can't get, they can't seem to knock him out. All right, now we got to do some real thinking. What I want to start doing is shooting, getting rid of targets. Oh, never mind. He's going to close because that's what he does. So Harper rushes in to save his boss. He rushes in against John Mark. Now Harper, like I said, this is what he does. So Harper's brawl is 4d8, uh, but he is a brute, so he can reroll one of these. Jean Marc brawls at 2d6. He's a bit of a brawler too. That actually works out kind of well for them. So we've got a seven, two sevens, and two fives, and a four. That's pretty good for Harper. So Harper's got four attacks. Uh, he could go ahead and block that one, actually. Why not? We'll go ahead and block the four. That's still three attacks. That guy has to roll three attacks on d6. Uh, he failed one. That's all he has to fail to be knocked down. So he's going to have to roll for that. Jean-Marc is down. Hagman is going to run, not run, Hagman is going to walk up to here and he's going to shoot with a plus one at the officer. Not sure that's the best choice, but Hagman's shoot is 3d6. It's going to be 4d6 because of range. And the boss is going to try to, he's going to shoot, he's got a pistol. He only shoots at 2d8, but he gets an extra die as well because of the range. So, that's two hits for the officer and only one hit for Hagman. Uh, okay, that's going to hurt. Uh, the officer doesn't have the choice to bring that down. But he only has to roll one. He doesn't. The officer took a hit. Hagman has done a wound on Rene Jeanneau. His health is d6 and he was hit twice. Uh, and he fails one. Hagman is uh, knocked down, but he did what he needed to do. Harris is going to shoot, and Harris, I think, is going to shoot at their sergeant. So he's at 3d6. The sergeant, he can't shoot back because he's unloaded. His dodge is only 2d8. So he could dodge one, and that's all he has to. So he dodges one, and he goes back around the corner. It's their turn. Uh, I think he has to charge the sheriff, the sergeant, because he's closest. That's probably not what he wants to do. So he's going to close with Harper. 
He is attacking. Uh, he is 3d10. However, Harper is going to brawl. He should be 4d8, but he's actually down to 3d8 because this is his second fight. All right. Okay. It's only one hit. Uh, however, he can re-roll. So it's three and three. So we'll roll first for the health rolls for the French. He missed one. So he goes down again. Oh, he should have been down anyway. That, that should have been three D8s because he's already down. He still missed, missed it, so he's in the same place. But now he'll be in D6s. Harper, on the other hand, Harper made all of his. Now I will charge in with Sharp. Sharp is now at 3D8, or 3D10. I'm gonna go ahead and make that 5D8. I'm gonna do that because I haven't been in a battle. Does he want to dodge or does he want to... He's going to fight, because why wouldn't he? So he would be at 3d10, but he's not 3d6s. This is the last fight of the game. If I can drop him, I get his stuff. I'll get our... We, he'll, we'll stop him from having the main plot point. We can't actually gain the plot point, though, because we've played everybody. Okay, he has one hit. And I have... Four hits. So he does fall. He falls. He drops his, the plot point. But we have no way to take it. I still have to roll for my hit. And I'm fine. Wow. Uh, quite a fight. Uh, the game ended pretty close, lost a lot of, got a lot of guys knocked down, did not manage to capture the agent. Uh, there's an example of how uh, Pulp Alley can be used outside of the 1930s, uh, 40s period, but, uh, or Westerns, there's a lot of Western pulp being done too, but uh, nice way to, to show how the roles can be used in a Napoleonic period. A little bit of alteration to make it a little bit more of a historic game than a pulp game, but not, not a whole lot. I hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoyed making it. If you have any questions or comments you'd like to make, please put those in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any ideas for, for other content you'd like to see us produce here on Cry Havoc Wargaming, we look for that in the comment section down below as well. If you've enjoyed this video and found it all useful, I hope that you will hit like. And if you'd like to continue to receive notifications for videos like this one or others that may help you decide how to better spend your tabletop wargaming money or time, then please hit subscribe and ring our notification bell. Till next time, cheers.